I had no clue what I'll do, honestly. Luckily, in the last two years of my being in uh, MSc, I had uh, got very excellently involved in photography because I, fine arts I used to like. I had this temperament, classical music I used to listen through my father. I got this thing of listening to classical music, Indian classical music. And then I was interested, I was also in a fine arts school and I used to play violin. I went to a couple of years, I learned violin, you know, classical music and violin. So some pictures that I took uh, with my father's box camera and my cousin's professional camera, 35 millimeter. So those first few roles, I mean, stunned a lot of my friends and people uh, that I could shoot like that. Yeah. So uh, obviously you feel good about it. So that kind of encouraged me to shoot more and more. And uh, one thing more I must tell you before that, that I hated to study in academics. So often I'll, uh, instead of going to my university to attend the classes, I'll uh, cycle down, I used to cycle to my university. And I was like kind of daydreaming person. So I'll see the beautiful landscape and our university was on the outskirts. So I will get into a very different mood and uh, instead go to the university library, sit there to browse through Life magazine this to get there. And it is very surprising that uh, in a small town like mine, an university that limited, they had Life magazine coming there. So the moment I finished my master's, I suddenly declared to my father that I want to go to Bombay and do photography. So my father, parents, they were all horrified that uh, I have no experience in photography and uh, how can I suddenly go and do photography in a city like Bombay where I had no contacts, no one. I had one friend though with whom I stayed for a month. So in Bombay, I, I had no camera also that time. I did weird things. I didn't want to take much money from the house or no money at all. So I used to paint also. So, you know, I told you. So I painted a miniature. I used to love miniatures, Indian miniatures. So, you know, what I what I planned is that I'll uh, reproduce it and make greeting cards out of it and go door to door and sell the, those greeting cards and raise money for camera. It was a crazy idea. But yes, I did that. I went door to door selling those cards and some people were very impressed. Some didn't quite understand. So half of the money I raised for a camera to buy a camera. Those time cameras were very cheap. So that's how I got into photography. Then JS Magazine. I chased JS Magazine editor Desmond Doig, which was a phenomenal, versatile editor and mountaineer and naturalist and uh, uh, authority on Himalayan art. And I did a lot of work which he liked Desmond very much. So that's how it started. Editorial work I did was uh, seldom satisfying, but you see, I I enjoyed doing it because I had real love and for picture making process, and uh, whether it was a editorial assignment for a serious thinking article, or I did a lot of work which was it's considered till today very very good work for the Taj magazine, which was house magazine of the Taj Mahal Hotel. But they were very quality conscious and uh, very encouraging and they always looked for things much sophisticated and better. So I used to put all my might and efforts and hard work and I used to do pictures which I think I can, I'm very proud to say, they still stand the test of time. So those were very good experiences. Then I did uh, news photography through my agency in Paris, SIPA Press, for almost over 10 years. So, often in those days, in the late 70s and 80s, any news which India will be news for would be bad news. Like, things like floods. And I'll get, there were no uh, email, internet, so I'll get these messages through telex or fax. And it will be like, we believe that there are human bodies floating and pigs eating them. Now, you and I mean, they didn't have common sense that pigs never eat human bodies, you know. So, if the floods in India and the one or two bodies floating, I mean, that will be international news. 
But then there were some very serious uh, happenings in India, like 1984, Mrs. Gandhi's assassination, uh, the Sikh riots that followed, and uh, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, Sanjay, Sanjay Gandhi dying, and Bhopal gas tragedy, stuff like that. So I enjoyed doing that best I could. And as I was telling you that uh, in news photography, is, the crux of the thing is that it's being presented at the right moment at the right time. Your picture may not be that great, depending on how much your time you got and how fast you grabbed it. So I had a cover for the Newsweek in Bhopal, and there were 12 photographers shooting from all over the world for Newsweek for that story. I had the cover. I'm very, I was very happy. And there were eight pictures inside uh, in the whole spread. So I, this was virtually entirely my story, you know. Uh, Time magazine had more photographers shooting and uh, so and uh, then uh, yeah and then I did some other non-newsy stuff also occasionally. I made a cover for Time magazine also with Sachin Tendulkar on the cover. So that kind of stuff then you know the work was published in Paris Match and other big magazines like Stern and uh, then uh, other work like in German magazine Geo, Geo. It's hard as that story. Yeah. That was a different kind of work, not journalism. By mid-80s, I totally stopped doing any kind of commercial work. I consider even editorial work commercial work. Because it is commercial. You ask me that I have a magazine, go and shoot it for myself, I'll pay you money. It is commercial. It's more dignified, but it is commercial. Yeah, so mid-80s, mid I think, I, we are totally...